Happy Holidays! For those of you who saw my last Halloween video, you know that I love the Muppets and almost anything that relates to the characters. And one of the many aspects I admire, as well as what I believe to be one of the many strengths in the mind of the creator, Jim Henson, is the ability to tell such powerful stories in just a short time frame. Whether they are more serious than others or just well-written comedies with tons of heart, the approach to the short time frame is always something I admire. While I do love some three to five hour epics like Lord of the Rings or the final cut of Apocalypse Now, it's an entirely different art to make a condensed narrative without feeling like a spark note summary. And I believe that the works of Jim Henson are more than enough proof of the possibilities for amazing short form stories. Look no further than his old series, The Storyteller. However, for today, I will be looking at one of his Christmas specials starring his world famous Muppets. No, not Muppet Family Christmas, uh, no, not even the John Denver special, it's not even the Great Santa Claus Switch. Do any non-Muppet experts even know what that is? I, I really want to know, did you hear about this? Before me naming or dropping it? I, I don't know. To cap off the holiday themed reviews before we discuss this thing, I'll be talking about what I believe to be Henson's most underrated works, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Now just from that wording, you're thinking, wait, this is an iconic Christmas special, how is this underrated? Or you might be thinking, what the heck is this? So for those who asked the latter, let me summarize. This was a Christmas special that first aired on CBC in 1977 and eventually re-aired on HBO the following year, and would also see subsequent reruns in the 1990s on ABC and Nickelodeon. It was based on a children's book written by Russell Hoban and illustrated by his ex-wife Lillian Hoban, and follows the same basic narrative. Two otters, widow Alice Otter and her son Emmett Otter, are working low-paying jobs in which they are often cheated by the locals of Frogtown Hollow. Not having enough to buy Christmas presents in time for the holidays, the two catch wind of a local talent show. Without any prior knowledge of each other's plans, Alice and Emmett make plans to partake in the show with their own acts to buy each other gifts. A spiffy new guitar for Emmett and an old piano for Alice. However, they must sacrifice parts of their livelihood in order to get the materials for their respective acts. Emmett uses Alice's wash tub to make a wash tub base for his titular jug band, and Alice trades Emmett's toolbox for a new fabric for her performance dress. If this does sound familiar to you, yes, this is an intentional twist on O. Henry's classic story, The Gift of the Magi. I'll touch more on that later after the summary. The two soon perform on stage, with Alice being the clear winner. Until at the last minute, a bunch of animal punks take the stage in a loud, hastily thrown together rock and roll number. This causes an amazing reaction from the audience and wins the grand prize money. Now aware of their sacrifices, the otters begin to sing with the jug band providing the instrumentals. A restaurant owner named Doc Bullfrog overhears them and hires them to play regularly at his establishment, now giving a chance for the otters to not only have better jobs, but also continue showcasing their talent to the locals. Now despite being an extremely straightforward narrative with almost nothing entirely groundbreaking, this special truly makes the most of the story with its impressive use of puppetry, the amazing set design, lovely practical effects, brilliant songs and score from Paul Williams, a frequent collaborator with the Muppets, and stellar performances from both the puppeteers and voice actors. Being someone who is already well versed with practical effects and handcrafted characters and sets, Emmett Otter is already a great watch just for the hard work the designers put into this. And it's not just the little buildings, interiors, and man-made forests, although they do look really well crafted and truly capture the storybook small town feel. It's like walking through a Christmas village set, which definitely helps intensify the Christmas vibes. In case you don't know, these are completely completely three-dimensional landscapes, unlike a lot of the other Muppet Show segments which were more or less 2.5D structures. There was also tiny props, especially the studs coming from the wash tub and oh my goodness, the water. It's always impressive to see how well the puppets interact with water in these things, especially given how difficult it is to work with liquid in any puppet or even model production. Look at the production footage and notes for Tugs and the Great Muppet Caper for further proof on just how hard this is to pull off. I must also note the entire talent show sequence is quite the marvel in its own right. Look at the green room, the house, and especially the stage when the animals are performing their acts. You can tell that there was tons of blocking for even the simplest of motions in placements. See, the art of puppetry gives the entire production an extra layer of practice and planning you wouldn't find in a live action production. Not only do you have to follow the same procedures, but you'll also need to construct the puppets, sets, and of course make the raised floors by hand. And for a very specific location like Frogtown Hollow, which like I said, is also a three-dimensional structure, this is a very intense field to enter and is sorely misunderstood and somewhat misrepresented in the media as a very cheap way to make products. 
Complementing the amazing art direction is, of course, the performances from the puppeteers. These performers are literally the most talented people in existence to make these characters feel like more than just talking plush toys. They legitimately act and move like real world actors, and especially in the more dramatic scenes and even down to earth moments, they feel way more human than they should. Let me tell you, any scene where Alice is singing her songs is among my absolute favorites in film. Massive salute to Frank Oz's amazing skills here for giving Alice the life she has in the special, and to Marilyn Sokol for the amazing vocals for the same character. Of course, the rest of the cast, including the always wonderful Jerry Nelson, do wonderful jobs as well. Nelson in particular plays the title character, who is pretty much the heart of the special. He is the one who wants to keep the memory of his father alive and gives Alice the spirit she needs, and is also the glue that holds the Frogtown Hollow Jubilee Jug Band together. Nelson always had a great voice for a protagonist, and this talent would be greatly showcased later in the role of Gobo Fraggle for Fraggle Rock. And the usual troupe is here too, playing their respective characters with standouts including Dave Goles as Wendell Porcupine, Richard Hunt as Charlie Muskrat and Fred Blizzard, and of course, Jim Henson himself as Mayor Fox and Harvey Beaver, providing their classic charms from their respective personality traits into the characters to give them added depth. But naturally, we have to conclude with how the story itself is handled. As I said before, this is essentially a retelling of the Christmas story, The Gift of the Magi, but with a fable twist and a greater emphasis on performing as a major theme. However, not only is the presentation enough to make this a substantial viewing, but it's also the way the plot points are handled that help make this not become a generic experience. For instance, the talent show. Let's ignore the fact that this is a retelling of a pre-existing tale for this argument. What I appreciate is going with the approach where the otters don't win the talent show, and the prize goes towards the recurring villains, the River Bottom Boys, and their band, The Nightmare. If this were an overly optimistic film, there would be some kind of reconsideration or extreme mess up from the Nightmare Band and they get the prize. If this were overly pessimistic, or I guess the better wording would be a little bit extra, they would continue living their lives in poverty and are now out of work. Honestly, I'd kind of like to see that version of the film where they just sing their hearts out and it ends like that. But instead, the punks still win the show, but the otters still get a happy ending, getting a new job working at Doc Bullfrog's restaurant. While they don't achieve their respective end goals, they found a different outlet by fusing their talents and keeping their heads up. This gives hope for anyone who failed to win a contest or get the desired job or even obtain a gift for your loved one. Even if you work extremely hard for that goal, you are not entirely destined for immediate success and unfortunately you might have been pretty close to getting that success as well. It's only through dedication and the possibility of a chance hearing that you might be able to find an alternative. Just for packing in that powerful view of life in such a short story is something I truly admire. And that's what I always love from Jim Henson's work. Ironically enough, it seems that my personal favorites are often ones that no one really talks about and have the most insight on personal life views. Stuff like Timepiece and The Cube are also great examples of that, as well as Jim Henson's cancelled film Cataclysm, which would have been reworked into Reflections. Well, yes, Emmett Otter is definitely more recognizable than those aforementioned films. No one truly knows it's Muppet related nor do they really give it the time of day because of its somewhat silly title. I mean, Trevor didn't even know what this was until he received it as a gag gift when he went to college. Of course he watched it and loved it, but still my point stands. It does get a few surges of recognition here and there, one of which being a musical adaptation, which isn't super mainstream and I haven't really seen myself, but it's definitely something. And there is a planned feature length remake with new songs from Brett McKenzie, who also helped with the song to the Muppets 2011 film, but given that it already worked perfectly as a short film, I don't see how a longer format would benefit the story. They're probably going to include a lot of unnecessary new characters and B-plots and hell, maybe they might even overdo the ending with more filler like the restaurant shutting down or the nightmare coming back for one last final duel or something like that. Either way, I highly recommend you give this special a watch. The production value is outstanding, the characters are memorable, and the story, while simple, carries one hell of a punch if you think about it long enough. This truly deserves to be in the reign of the annual holiday classics like Rudolph and The Grinch and even Nightmare Before Christmas as both that film and Emmett Otter share the intense labor that's put into a Christmas movie. Please give this a watch. You won't be disappointed. At least I hope you won't. I made a whole video about it just recommending it to you. Oh, and uh, Kermit the Frog narrates the film in the original airing and the 40th anniversary re-release and was the birth of this meme. And I'm here to tell you the story about Emmett Otter's... <laughs> However, if you have the DVD from Hit Entertainment, you're out of luck. Honestly, I, I kind of like this special better without Kermit narrating. Without him, the special truly stands out better as its own thing without being directly associated with Vanilla Muppets. And, yeah, aside from that, that's all I have to say. So, yeah. Um, here's the comment of the day. Ah! 
from Bradley Boy. Merry Christmas indeed, even though the football thing was not in the Christmas specials, but uh, okay, you, you, you do you. And I'd also like to take this time to thank the Patreon producers, Leaf Razor, Reziel, Sophie Burgers, Michael Bellamy, Azarius, Tanner Kapischke, Whoop Doo, and MD the Dude. I hope I said that right. If you would like to have your name read at the end of every video, then please consider donating to the Patreon. There is a link down below. Uh, have a Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Winter Solstice, all that good stuff, by the way. And this will unfortunately be the last Christmas-themed video because we're going to be talking about some crazy stuff. And the very next video, oh boy, you're in for something very crazy. <laughs>